Right, while our saucepan is getting hot here, we're going to be doing roast pork, and I cook it in a certain way, so hopefully um, you can try this out, and for me actually it's been a bit of a revelation, it's um, kept all the meat nice and moist, and generally I just think it's, I just think it's the way forward to cook most joints really. Um, you can even cook chicken like this as well. But you'll see what I'm going to do. So we're getting that nice and hot. We've got a nice big joint of pork here. Uh, the plan is to do roast potatoes with this and then some braised cabbage with um, apple. Because pork, I mean apple goes with pork. So um, yeah, that's a good combo. And I would also recommend having some apple sauce with this. I'm just going to probably use some that's in a jar from the local supermarket. Now, quickly, I'm going to just show you, this is going to be quite tricky to do actually, because um, space-wise, I want to kind of do it next to the heat, but um, actually I'll just, um, I'll just try and zoom in over here. Sorry about this. This is where I need a, a cameraman. Um, Where's Keith Floyd when you need him? <laughs> Sorry, bad joke. But um, no, I always loved Keith Floyd and um, he was always telling the cameraman off, which was a bit of a in joke. So there's our um, pork joint. Now we're just gonna cover that with a bit of oil. And as it's already got creases in it, not creases, um, sort of cuts, we're not gonna use a knife really to um, make any more score marks. But you could if you want, actually, why not? So we could just sort of lightly, oh, helps if you uh, have a sharp knife. Well, that's not really working. So I think we're probably just gonna leave it as is. <laughs> Swiftly moving on, no one saw that. Um, gonna put some salt on top. That'll help with crackling. And that's actually pretty much it. Am I gonna bother with pepper? Yeah, I'll put a little bit of pepper on. Wash my hands quickly. So yeah, a little bit of pepper on the top. And what we're going to do now is we're going to brown the, crisp up the skin, just on the top here, nice bit of pepper, in our hot frying pan. And then what we're going to do when it's um, frying is we're going to boil a kettle full of water and we're going to basically add that to some herbs and some other things I'm going to show you. I'll basically talk you through uh, what I'm putting in as I do it. So yeah, let's get this nice and hot which it's looking good. Oh, before you do this, pre-heat uh, the oven to 200 degrees Celsius. The plan is to cook the pork at 200 degrees for about half an hour to try and sort of get that crackling nice and crisp and then after that we're going to turn it down to 160 and cook it for a, ooh, another hour, hour and a half but um, I think, the, well the plan is basically here to cook it in a sort of stock, well sort of watery, bistoey, vinegary, herby water to keep the moisture and then we're just going to try and, we're going to try and get it crisp on top and then nice and soft and succulent all the way through. Um, so I think we've got enough heat there. Yes, yeah, so this is looking nice and hot. Ooh. It's a bit of a fiddle of a joint, but we'll get there in the end. What we might have to do is just squeeze it in a bit. Now we clear down the decks. Always make sure you get rid of your dirty meat juices. You don't want to cross-contaminate anything. And then wash your hands again which I'm sure everyone's had a lot of practice with over the last few weeks. Now as we're doing that, we'll get the kettle on. And I'm going to talk you through what I'm going to do in our other dish here. So we're going to do two things at once and hopefully not burn the pork. So in here quickly, I'm going to add some garlic, roasted garlic and pepper. I'm 
and he's already got some uh, rosemary in here. Whip that in. Bit of Liam Perrins. Bit of soy sauce. Oop. I just sprayed the wall. No worries. Nice bit of soy sauce. And then I like garlic. I have garlic. <laughs> <laughs> That's enough garlic. Oi. And we've probably got that nice and crisp almost. Let's just have a check. No, that's alright. It's just, um, let's give it a kick. Oh, yeah, it's looking good. So keep an eye on your meat. You don't want that to burn. Because it will crisp up in the um, oven. And then what we're going to do is add a couple of stock cubes. So I'm kind of cheating here, which. Um, so that I would be told off by most chefs, really, because you should really be making your own stock and thickening your own stuff, but um, it is what it is at the moment. And then some bisto in there. You don't have to have it too thick, because we can thicken it later, but it, I just think it adds a little bit more flavour. So now back over here, Floyd. Oh, that's looking great. And we're going to have a little look at this while the kettle's just finishing off. And that bit is a bit, looking a bit anemic. Excuse hands. So I've been burnt burnt before, so it's turned round somewhat. So uh, sometimes with these joints, they can sort of come apart a bit, which isn't ideal. But anyway, wash my hands again. I really need barbecue tongs with this thing. Um, but I've got a spatula. So back over here, we'll add our water. And what we're going to do is add it up to, well, quite a lot actually. Because we want it to basically come up to where our crackling is. We want to leave the crackling um, out in the open. So that'll do. So basically a whole kettle's work pretty much. Going to give it a stir. And then when our, our meat's done, we're going to get this bad boy into the oven. Oh, there's nothing quite, quite like the sound of a good sizzle, but we're quite feisty now, so we're going to take this off. Just take it off the heat for a second. But it's pretty much done, because at the moment I'm using my hands to sort of get it in. Um, so, I'm going to let that just calm down. Ugh. Calm down a wee tad, even. And uh, it's a lot easier when you don't have to film and cook because uh, you don't have to move things around to try and keep it all in the um, in the shot, as it were. So I apologise if it, this is a bit amateur, but um, I'm doing my best. So now let's go over to here. There's our lovely, um, basically sort of bistoy stock. Um, you can use anything pretty much in there. Um, another one I recommend is uh, sweet sherry. But you could use things like red wine vinegar. Um, and what else? Um, you could even do a sort of beer gravy if you want. So, as you can see, our meat is in like this. I don't, it's a bit... It's a shame this has all come out from underneath, which is a bit frustrating. But we're going to turn it back around. So we've got a bit of sort of crackling there going already. Um, now let's get it into the oven. So here is our oven. I'm actually sort of moving the tripod as we do this. I hope this, <laughs> hope this kind of works. Um, I think, yeah, I've got it on kind of a lowish rung. But I want to move that because we're going to be doing roast potatoes. Now the beauty of this dish is because it's going to take about an hour and a half, two hours. You've got plenty of time to do whatever, what you know, whatever you want really. So um, it's a lot like the slow cook with with this sort of moisture. I think is uh, brilliant. I actually kind of stole it from Gordon Ramsay because he did it with pork belly, which is pretty much what this is, but. He did the same sort of thing. But yeah, that's going to go in now. 200, it's about 4 o'clock, 10 past 4, and we'll check back 
Um, well, I'm going to do the spuds now and then we'll carry on with the whole thing. But yeah, that's in. So pretty easy. Um, yeah. So it's basically a quarter of an hour since I just put it in the oven. But I thought I would tell you now that you might as well do your roast spuds and get them parboiling. Because they'll take about half an hour, um, basically, to come to the boil, do them for 10 minutes, and then uh, strain them and let them dry out. Um, I found that if you've got the spuds nice and dry, um, they just sort of, you know, they seem to do a bit better. Um, obviously, you've got to get your oil nice and hot as well. You can use um, goose fat, lard. Um, and maybe some other stuff as well, but I just I'm just going to use vegetable oil. You really want about this size, you know, not too big. Um, in they go. So yeah, ten minutes, and then let them get dry. Um, and they don't have to go in just yet because the spuds will take about forty-five minutes. So we've got plenty of time. I mean, if you want, you can just leave them in the hot water just a bit longer than the ten minutes. Um, so like 15 minutes in total and then a good 15-20 minutes drying um, because we haven't even done the half hour of um, 200 degrees C yet so uh, let's um, get on to the next stage so these have had uh, 10 minutes or so we're going to strain them I forgot to mention you need to put salt in there so make sure you've salted them well Now all these are going to do is just sit for 20 minutes or so to go nice and dry. And now we're going to check our meat and we're going to turn down the temperature to 160. So there we go. We'll just have a little look to show you what's happening. So you don't really need to see this but we'll have a little look. So I had half an hour. So not much to report. Looking good. And then nice low heat and then I'll check back when I start to do the um, prepare the apple and cabbage right we're about an hour into the overall cook and I realized um, that this braised cabbage I'm gonna be doing it's gonna take about an hour so I'm starting that now I'm gonna get it on and um, it really doesn't matter about it going in the oven afterwards you can just keep it on the hob um, if you haven't got any space in your oven, um, if the potatoes are taking up too much room. But anyway, first things first, we're going to chop up some bacon. And have a bowl with you, put to the side, whoops, so that you can just put the bacon in. And I'm going to be doing a few little chef thingies, well not really, I'm just going to be showing you how to chop an oven, an oven, an onion, but everyone knows that, I think. Well anyway, this is a tried and tested uh, method, and it just speeds things up a bit. I haven't actually peeled an, <laughs> an apple for a long time, so this could go wrong. You've got to core it as well, so ideally have a corer. I mean, you can just chop the um, apple and... Uh, you know, take up the core sort of manually, but um, we're not going to do that. Um, in fact, let's do the apple now because that's probably going to be the trickiest thing. After the bacon, wash your hands. You don't want the meat juice onto your. Um, well, it's just generally wash your. I mean, it doesn't harm washing your hands, but obviously don't get soap on your food. But um, I've always got in the habit of washing my hands after pretty much anything, and I should actually use different. Um, board. I know it's a bit of a pain in the ass, but um, we should be correct because general rule when you're cooking is meat and savoury sort of veg. You shouldn't really uh, mix the two. I mean if it's fresh meat it's not really gonna harm you. Most likely. Especially a bit of bacon, but if we are being uh, Technical, right. So we've got apples, cabbage, and I've, um, you can use parsley, but I'm using thyme and 
uh, basil. And we've got some balsamic vinegar, salt we're going to use, pepper, and I'm actually going to use a bit of red wine and maybe a touch of soy sauce because I like the bit of sweetness from soy sauce. So let's do some coring. Where's our corer? Of course the corer has disappeared. That's fun. I found that Cora, it had been uh, taken off by a little birdie. Oof. Nice and straight down. If voila, done like a true professional. You can see it straight through. Aye aye. And uh, we're going to use two. These aren't cooking apples, but I don't think it really is going to be a huge problem. You want the apples though, because it just gives that little bit of sweetness with the uh, with the cabbage. Um, and we're just going to peel it. I'll press pause. You don't want to see me peeling an apple, really. It's a bit uneventful, but. Um, now voila. So we've done our apples. Wonderfully done. <laughs> now we're gonna do a onion quickly. And you want a sharp knife for this. Generally as a rule, always make sure you have a sharp knife because you'll get cut basically when um, you don't have a sharp knife. This will be a very simple Hopefully you can see this um, way of doing it. So I've basically yeah, cut it in half and then I'm going to slice off the end, not too much, but just so that you've got an angle. Don't want to do the end where the sort of root comes. And then peel off the outer layer. It doesn't matter if you use a a normal onion. I'm using a red because it's just what I've got left. And then what we're going to do is um, put lines. We're going to cut vertical lines down through. If you can see this, put my hand around this way through the onion, probably about 10 or so, and then using your knife, slice towards yourself, or towards the right here, hopefully you can see that, and then another cut going across, you want to try and get as far as you can towards the, the root here, and then you just slice, but make sure you put your fingers down like this, so you're covering the onion, hopefully you can see this, and then it'll just come out at the right size. And then, once we've done that, I'm going to get the heat on and show you the cabbage, uh, which is looking a bit sort of manky on the outside. So what I'm going to do is take off the outer layers and then just, um, I'm not going to use all of this, I'm just going to chop half a section. Uh, and let's get, now get into the frying. So we're in an hour. We're an hour into the cooking. The bacon of my uh, cabbage dish is browning up nicely. I've got a dish here uh, with some oil in. That's going in. I'm leaving a space on the right-hand side because I want um, the cabbage to go in there. Maybe sort of in half an hour's time, just to sort of keep warm and you know cook off in the oven so yeah let's get back onto the cabbage I don't know if I mentioned that I'm using the pork fat that we've done previously I might have memory loss <laughs> um, but our onions are going to go in now because I want them to get a nice brown as well um, I could have left the bacon on a little bit longer there but I'm not going to I, want the, I still want the, the bacon to be brown, but I do want these onions to just get a bit of colour. 
I don't think it really matters too much with this dish. I think just a few minutes browning the onions and then we can put in uh, the cabbage and the apple. But just as a little tip, I just realised this as I was doing it, the apples start to brown. So what I've done is sprinkled a little bit of sugar on them um, and uh, juice of one lime. I think basically if you add a bit of lime juice, it will stop your apples from browning. I think the trick is, you know, if you're doing uh, certain things, you put a bit of lime juice in your water. I'm not sure if that's actually going to work, but uh, that's what I've done anyway. A bit of lime juice won't harm, harm the dish. So um, this is all doing well. I'll let this go for a few minutes and then we'll be back soon. Right, that's had a few minutes. We're going to put our cabbage over the top. Just let that sit on there for a bit. And our apple. With a bit of sugar on there. As you can see, I've just left some chunky bits of um, apple in there. And while we're doing that, I'm going to chop up some thyme and some parsley, basil and thyme, sorry. I've seen a few dishes use fennel, uh, Jamie Oliver uses fennel, and I think uh, another lass uses um, parsley. Um, I don't think it really matters, it's, you know, personal taste really. Um, so that's doing well, I'll just chop up our herbs a bit. The uh, fat for the potatoes is um, warming up. You want to leave that a good 10 minutes in the oven. You want to get it nice and hot. And our spuds by now are, are really dry, so they're just going to soak up the um, oil and just crisp really nice and quick. Yeah. Um, we have got the oven on a lower temperature, so that'll help, basically. Um, of course, what you can do is, now we're sort of an hour and a half into the cook, we can put the pork on the lower heat and put the spuds on the top heat, which is probably what I'm going to do actually. Um, so yeah, now we're going to add some wine, although I was rather enjoying that, but <laughs> for the purpose of my channel, we're going to add a little bit. Save myself some, of course. It's a nice uh, Ribeiro del Duero, which is a nice wine. And then we've got 150 mils here of balsamic vinegar, but I'm probably not going to add that much. Probably going to add half of that, about 75 mils, just to cover it. You can always add more liquid, you know, um, as it's cooking off. So there, we're going to sort of simmer this off for a bit. And we're going to add some salt, some pepper. You can use sea salt here, but I'm just going to use normal salt. Bit of salt and pepper which has done a runner. That's probably enough, he says. And for me, I'm going to add a little touch of soy sauce. Not too much, because you don't want it too Chinesey. And the other thing I was going to add but I can't find it. It's a touch of uh, Liam Perrins, just to give it a little bit of a twang. Here's an interesting fact. I don't know if anyone knows that Liam Perrins, um, which we put on our bacon here in the UK, amongst other things, uh, is made out of fish, or a type of fish. I can't remember what it was, actually. Sardines, maybe? Or was it anchovies? Probably anchovies, yeah. So um, I didn't realise I was adding like fish sauce to my bacon all these years. Which uh, I'm sure quite a few Brits don't know that, and they're going to be going, you what, mate? But um, it's the truth. So that's going to cook off. We're going to then put that into our bowl here, and then this is just going to go into the oven. And as the oven's on low, this can just simmer away for an hour. Happy days. So, yeah, let's carry on on to the next stage. Right, it's a lovely look at the oven door. <laughs> we, uh, I've actually put the... Uh, pork in some foil, wrapped it up in foil because I want to keep it moist. But our spuds are ready to go in, and these should take about 45 minutes. Let's put this down here. 
and it's not sizzling enough particularly, but oh god, and that spud looks terrible. But um, anyway, they'll look great. And our cabbage is going to go in. And then it's going to be 45 minutes and it'll be ready. So it's all done. It's quarter to seven and I started at ten past four. Um, at first glance, and the oh yeah, temperature for pork is 71 degrees. And I've got a little thermometer here, which uh, I've tested it. And it's looking really good. In fact, everything's looking really good. I would say, personally, I wanted it a little bit more kind of um, softer, perhaps. And it looks a little bit tough in the centre, but we'll soon find out. Oi. It looks delicious. I'll show you the um, cabbage. Just put that by the back. And then we'll put a few spuds on and then that'll be it. So um, let's just carve into it to see how it does look. So this bit here Oh, it's really soft. I mean, that's that's perfect. And just to show you that I can cook, we'll go into this section. And that's that's lovely. I mean, actually, that is a wee bit firm for my liking. But let's just have a taste. Oh. Uh, it's fine. It's a little bit. Mm. But the flavour is lovely. And the crackling's really good. So I'll just sort of slice off a few bits and then we'll do a lovely little sort of plate here. Oh, and I've got some of the gravy. So the beauty of this dish is we've already done the gravy. Because um, I used a bit of bisto and lots of flavours. So that's enough for me. Or is it? <laughs> I haven't had the whole lot. But uh, no I'm not really, I'm not that much of a bloater. But um, let's put a bit of cabbage on there. I'm definitely going to eat the crackling. The... Oh, ow, 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 ow. That's hot, that's hot, that's hot. This... Um, Bray's cabbage dish is um, it's looking really good. In fact, could also act as a gravy. Hopefully, you're, you can see all this. And then a couple of spuds. Let's just get these over. Oh, um, I forgot to update a few things in the description of the last vid. So I'm going to put a few things in the description. Just something that you can use for your barbecue. Um, you know, the thing I did at the start, and also I'll link in the Nando's pack I used. Um, presentation is not amazing, and we've got a nice oops, spoon here of, hmm, actually could do have been a little bit thicker this. So if your gravy's a bit runny, you might just want to add a little bit of extra bisto to it to thicken it up, but um, that'll do here. Oh, and then some apple sauce to finish. But um, I don't know where the apple sauce is. Hang on a sec. Right, we've got the apple sauce. I'm just going to put that there to the side. And I was never the best at presentation, but uh, there you go. So it's um, roast pork with braised cabbage with bacon and onion and roast buds and a sort of um, 
semi-reduced juice, as it were, or gravy. Thanks for watching and uh, stay tuned for some more next week. I've got some beer making to show you. Cheers.